Hi everyone! Welcome back to Comfy Cozy Crochet with Tris. I am Tris and this is podcast number 11. Um, today is just a normal podcast. We have um, a couple of finished objects and we are going to talk about some works in progress that I've been working on this week. Um, also, it is the announcement for the winner of my 500 subscriber giveaway. So that'll be a little bit later on. So keep watching for that. Um, and I just wanted to say hello and welcome to everyone who is new here. Um, let's be honest, we're all pretty new here, right? Um, the channel has only been going on for, I think, less than three months at this point. Um, and so we're all just kind of getting to know each other, but I just wanted you to know that I welcome all of you from the bottom of my heart. I'm so thrilled that you guys are here to um, see what I've been working on and um, share with me what you've been working on and talking all kinds of yarny goodness, right? Um, so anyway, I'm thrilled to have everyone here. I know I've gotten a couple of shout outs, one from Allison, one from Shell, one from um, Debbie at the Canadian Crotcheter. I will link all of them down below. Fabulous, wonderful, warm, welcoming women. Wow, there was some alliteration there. That was not meant but I'm okay with it because who doesn't love a little alliteration? Um, anyway, um, I will link their channels down below. They are just the sweetest, sweetest ladies. Okay, sorry about that. I needed to make a bit of an adjustment there, but all three ladies are just the sweetest, sweetest, and I will go ahead and link them down below. Um, and I, I've heard a couple of people say that they just found me offhand, um, scrolling through as a recommended video, which is fantastic. Um, so anyway, a huge welcome to everyone who ha is stopping by and subscribing to my channel. I am so appreciative and humbled. Um, so thank you so much. If you can give that a thumbs up too, that would be great. Um, but without further ado, um, let's get into it because we have a few things that I want to get into the winner of the giveaway. So here we go. Um, honestly, not a whole lot going on finished objects wise today. I was not very good. Um, we had a lot of things going on um, in my movie and stitch um, little like five minute video. I mentioned that we had a funeral for my husband's great aunt who had passed. Um, and we also had my mother's um, small family birthday dinner that we had to get that set up. And then um, my son, who is not quite 16 months old, came down with hand, foot, and mouth disease. Out of nowhere, um, he has not been out of the house except to go to his grandparents' house um, in months and months and months and months. And um, so one of us adults must have um, picked it up somehow at a grocery store or something like that. Um, Sean and I don't even go into the grocery store. We do grocery pickup and they just put it in our trunk. Um, so... A little bit devastating there, but he's going to be totally fine. It just means that he's got a really, really sore mouth, had a little bit of a fever, didn't sleep for about five days, naps or not night time, not night time. I'm such a mom or bedtime. Um, as far as nighttime goes, I mean, um, and, uh, poor thing couldn't hardly eat. And, um, it was just kind of a nightmare. So they said, you know, it's just a virus. All kids get it. It doesn't matter how careful you are. You know, adults get it and they carry it to children and they have no idea they're sick. They don't show any symptoms at all. That's probably what happened. You guys picked it up at the grocery store and gave it to him. So anyway, um, needless to say, all of that, okay, <laughs> is just to say that I have hardly had any time to crochet. Um, basically, um, I, I only crochet while my child is sleeping um, because he really likes to get into my yarn and my hooks and snag it and pull it everywhere and um, I want to be present while he's awake. So while he is napping or after he goes to bed is when I do all of my crochet and quite frankly he wasn't sleeping. <laughs> so. so crochet with Tiffany Hansen, I believe is her name. It used to be Hook for Hope. I will link her channel down below, but she has put out this big campaign to get 5,000 rectangles to be donated, kind of in her name, attention, Hook for Hope, um, to Warm Up America, which is a wonderful blanket, um, blanket organization that um, collects seven inch by nine inch rectangles, crocheted or knit, I believe, to this organization, and then they 
put them together and make blankets of whatever size is needed for all of these other organizations. So children's hospitals, shelters, um, disaster relief, um, Red Cross, all kinds of different things. Um, and so you go ahead and make the squares and they make the blanket. And if it's going to go to a NICU unit for premature babies, it's going to be small. If it's, you know, going something huge, then they're going to put it together and make a huge blanket. Um, so I thought that was a super cool idea. Um, I love the idea of giving to charity and I really wanted to amp that up this year. That was one of my goals that I actually didn't put in the video of my goals video. Um, if you haven't seen that, I'll also link that down below. Um, but it was something that's really been on my mind and I, I really wanted to do last year and then COVID hit and people weren't accepting donations. And so when Tiffany talked about this in my area, at least, um, so when Tiffany talked about that, I'm like, I am going to jump on the bandwagon. It's a great way to, um, you know, get my stash down and what a lovely society that I don't have to decide society. I mean, organization that I don't have to decide, well, who's in the most need they collect them and they give it to who's in the most need. So um, I made a few rectangles. Um, you can do these um, supposedly in whatever stitch you desire, um, but Tiffany did show us two stitches. One was the seed stitch and the other was the Trinity stitch. Neither stitches, um, I had never done either of those stitches, so I went ahead and um, learned both of them. It does turn out that I prefer the seed stitch to the Trinity stitch only because I am an extremely tight crocheter. Um, and because I was trying so hard to maintain gauge, um, the Trinity stitch was not nearly as easy for me, but it does produce a beautiful texture and it's a, really a quite easy stitch. Um, but I will show you what I've got so far. And these haven't been blocked or anything. One of them definitely needs it to maintain gauge. And I have um, adjusted my um, foundation row in order to make up for that. But here is one in kind of an Aran color. And there's that seed, seed stitch there. Just got that beautiful, very tight texture. So there's one two, same color and yarn, three, same color and yarn, and then I went ahead and did this in um, Karen One Pound um, Jumbo in Seaside Ombre, and look at that sort of color pooly kind of interesting texture, um, but there is the seed stitch in a variegated, kind of fun, kind of wild, um, and then I went ahead and did a, I have to weave in all of my ends here for these as well. But this one is the Trinity stitch. Let's see if that'll focus in there and you can see that lovely texture. And this is definitely kind of a scrappy rectangle, but I did it in, um, I believe, Royal Blue. This is Royal Blue Big Twist Classic. And the other is that Seaside Ombre, Karen One Pound Jumbo. Um, but anyway, look at that beautiful texture of the Trinity stitch. Um, if I wasn't trying to maintain gauge so badly, I would definitely do this. I would do this in a blanket or for a cowl. I thought it was lovely. And you still get that really warm, um, thick, tight um, fabric from it. So I loved that. So that's one, two, three, four, five finished rectangles. <laughs> So there's my finished objects for you. Are you so happy that you tuned in for this episode? <laughs> um, but I do have a, a, some definitely some whips to show you as well. Two of those being more rectangles. Um, this is the start of another one in the Mandala Ombre and Cool. Ran out of that, so I'm going to add in some gray or some white to finish up that. That's the seed stitch. Um, and then this is the one I'm currently working on, which is another one. It's seed stitch with just a tiny bit left over of that seaside ombre and that royal blue still. And look how lovely that looks in that stitch as well. So working on that. Um, and I set, I have a whole tote bag here of different scrap yarns that I plan on making a few more. Um, her particular deadline is February 15th. Um, is her big goal to get the 5,000 sent in. So I plan on sending that in by the 7th at, at least. Um, I believe it's the 3rd today, so I definitely do know. 
no, it's the second today. This is gonna air on the third though. So I only have a few more days to finish up a few more of these rectangles and then get it sent in. So um, I will be probably working on more of those tonight and tomorrow and trying to get as many as I can done to send in. Actually, a friend of mine was kind of um, working on a couple rectangles of her own as well. I don't know if she's planning on giving those to me to send in or not, but that was wonderful. Hi, Jess. Um, so super excited that she's kind of jumping on that bandwagon too, but I'll go ahead and send it in by the 6th or the 7th just to make sure it gets there by the 15th. Um, and that might actually be something that I go ahead and do off and on throughout the year um, as I accumulate different um, scrap balls I may go ahead and just um, here and there making a rectangle and um, putting them together until I've got enough for you know a priority envelope and then just sending it down whenever I kind of fill one up. So there's that. Um, let me know if you guys are working on um, Warm Up America. What a cool thing. I love it. Um, anyway, she was doing that as their thir it's their 30th anniversary this year and so that's why she was doing this big campaign um, but I think it's awesome to do year round so I think I might just go ahead and keep doing it. I'm really enjoying it and it's a nice little palette cleanser project right? Okay this is way too long because I keep rambling but I have two works in progress to go ahead and show you so let's get started. Um, one day I was able to get a hold of um, a couple of my girlfriends, we had a little crochet date um, and here at the house and we worked on our Lark's Foot blanket together. So this is mine. Now this was featured in the UFO video. I don't remember it was number one or number two. This is made all with Karen One Pound. This one is the medium gray mix color. This one is their yellow. I don't know if it's called Sunflower. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the ball band anymore for it, so I can't tell you the exact color name, but I'm sure you can look it up on Joanne's Michaels, the Karen, Your Inspirations website. Um, and then this one's just white, and this blue is called Ocean, and that is a much prettier blue than ever will show up on camera. Um, it's not just like a royal blue, and it's not quite a teal. It's sort of somewhere in between. Really lovely. So I'm really enjoying this. This is going to be a whopper of a blanket. Um, it's quite a bit longer than my wingspan. I'm just under 5'2", so that gives you a little bit of an idea. And, oh, I don't know, three and a half, four feet um, long so far. So they were having a little bit of a struggle with... Um, learning the Lark's Foot Stitch, even with the YouTube tutorial, which is how I learned as well. Um, so they have been asking me for quite some time, please, can we get together and can you just sit down and teach us how to do it? Because oh, uh, we're lost. Um, so then COVID hit and we hadn't been able to do it. So this baby has just been sitting here for quite some time waiting on them so that I had something to work on to show them. Like I needed a piece to be able to show them. So we finally were able to get together and both of them actually just completely restarted and um, started from scratch and they are just cruising on it, um, both Maria and Jesse, which is just awesome. So I was able to work on that some, but that took about two days of me working on the Lark's Foot instead of anything else. And let's face it, this is not going to be one of my main priorities. So um, this was worked on quite a bit this uh, this week, two out of the seven days. Um, but it's probably going to go off um, back into its tote and sit around for a little while longer while I get some other projects done. That's that. And I will be working on that just kind of here and there um, until I get that done. And I'm not sure how long I want to make that, so we'll see. Um, okay, and one last whip. Many of you know that I have been dying to try some sort of sweater or cocoon. I've been really into making blankets, scarves. Um, I finally have kind of jumped into the fray and started making some hats, but even then I've probably only made four or five different hat patterns, kind of stuck with... Um, you know, this, the safety net of the few that I know. Um, but I did make like three new hat patterns in um, the past month or so. So that was really nice, but I really want to make sweaters, cocoons, um, hooded cowls, tops, what have you. Right. Um, I really want to just start making anything that 
I think looks cool and stop being so afraid of that. So um, when my friend was talking about making this um, super simple crochet cocoon is what it's called with the hooga yarn, I'm like, um, okay, but that would be hard. And she goes, no, no, it's like supposedly it's just a rectangle and then you kind of sew it together to make arms and, and you know, sew on a little or create a little extra for the sleeves. I'm not even exactly sure how the um, construction is going to go. <laughs> I haven't necessarily read that far. I'm just like jumping in with both feet. But this is by the Moogly blog. I'll post it down below. And I believe it's called the Hooga Crochet Cocoon. Um, I chose to make mine out of the Red Heart Hooga, which is what they call for. But I chose to do mine in the um, colorway Aloe. So this is a beautiful, lovely, silvery green. Um, and it's really funny. I have a green blanket that my friend made me and up against it, it looks very silvery gray. And up against my gray sofa, it looks very, very green. This um, fabric on this pillow is made from the same fabric as my sofa. So that should show you that it definitely does look green. Um, and it's called Aloe, it's beautiful. If you don't know the specs for this yarn, it is a number five bulky, calls for a 6.5 millimeter or K hook. Um, machine wash cold, gentle cycle, tumble dry low, 70% acrylic, 30% nylon, 132 yards, 121 meters, five ounces, 141 grams. Made in Turkey, and again, that colorway is aloe. wants to focus there hopefully you can see that so anyway this is the colorway that I chose to do it in and it doesn't look like much right now if I'm being honest because I am in the big old um, oops, losing some stitches here that's what I get for not using a stitch marker to hold my place I actually am using stitch markers for once um, but anyway I am just in the middle of the big old body part which is just a big old rectangle. But isn't it beautiful? It's all double crochets in the front loop only, which I am always complaining. Can you see that? <laughs> so I am always complaining about back loop only crochet because it's just a pain and I have such tight tension when I crochet that it's kind of hard for me to get back into the back loop. I'm actually finding that front front loop crochet is not actually as hard for me as back loop is. Um, and yet it gives what the designer is calling this sort of pinstripey. Um, oh, there's a changing skeins. I will sew that in eventually, obviously. Um, but can you see the texture there of where um, she's called it sort of a pinstriping effect? Um, where the front loop meets up and it, it it gives it kind of a nice interesting texture without it being too loud um not into loud garments for myself and so i wanted this to be just very comfy and cozy um and also just um kind of to pretty neutral that would go with many of the things that i wear i wanted to know that if i wore it over this it would match if i wore it over white black whatever so I just wanted to make sure that it was neutral enough that it would go with most things um, in my wardrobe. And it is so cozy, it is so nice. So I'm really, really excited to be able to finish that up. I believe I'm on row 38 of 40. I will say that this pattern does call for six balls of this, which I purchased um, all through Hirschner's because they have a pretty good deal. I think our Joann's wants $9.99 or $10.99 per skein. Um, and Hirschner's has it regularly on sale for $5.99, I believe. So, um, I purchased six of them through Hirschner's and, um, I had a free shipping code, so it was super easy for me to do that. That being said, I am such a tight crocheter that I am pretty sure that this is my last skein. I have two more rows, I believe, or two and a half more rows of the body, and then I do have to make the sleeves. 
I am pretty certain that I do not have enough yarn here. So I'm a little bit nervous. Um, I'm hoping that I can just go to Joann's and they'll either have the same color lot that I need or they'll have something similar enough and you just won't be able to tell. I'm gonna take my chances a little bit, see if there's a coupon that's like 50% off one regular priced item or something. But anyway, wish me luck with that. I'm so nervous. Um, I definitely meant to buy in bulk as many as I could in one um, color lot. Hershner's was really good about sending me every single skein in the same color lot. Um, but I should have purchased one more just in case. Um, I didn't want more of it because I didn't know what I would do with it if I had extra, but I should have known with how uh, tight my tension is that I was going to need extra yarn. So um, anyway, it calls for six balls for the misses up to 2X and then 2X or larger is supposed to take only eight balls. So, um, but it looks like even though, um, looks like since it's so much shorter, I'm just gonna end up needing a bit more yarn. Mine's just gonna end up being tighter, um, more tightly woven than everybody else's. So there's that. So those are my only whips. This really right here is my only true whip. Um, but oh, I'm so excited. And I know I'm just right around the corner from being finished with it. And I started it yesterday. So I'm really excited about that. Um, if I can just kind of whip out no pun intended. Um, if I can just kind of whip that out in like two or three days, I'm going to be thrilled. Um, cause sometimes it takes me two or three days to make a scarf. So two days to go ahead and make a, um, a garment for my first time ever. I'm going to be pretty thrilled with that. That being said, it's just double crochet, right? That's why it's been so quick. Okay. So, um, I want to talk to you guys about, let me get comfortable here. I want to talk to you guys about my giveaway. If you watched until the end of my last podcast, number 10, you will know that I had a secret giveaway in that video. Yes, I did. I did. Um, because we had reached over 500 subscribers and it had maintained it and maintained the 500 um, for a few days. So I went ahead and put a secret giveaway at the end of my video. So you might want to watch to the end of my videos when you watch my videos because sometimes there's secret stuff in there. <laughs> um, so anyway, I went ahead and um, did that. I did throw, throw a couple extra things in the giveaway box since I showed you guys what was in there last time. So um, quickly, I will um, just go over who won and... Um, then I will show you what else um, is being thrown in the giveaway and kind of a recap for those of you who may not have seen the last podcast, which I will also link down below. Um, but I will go ahead and re-show you what um, she's going to be getting. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay. So, um, unfortunately, the first person that I picked, um, basically my stipulations were in the video go ahead and let me know what you would do with the yarn if you won and also i needed you to like the video and subscribe and i did mention that i was going to be checking if you're a subscriber um now not everybody knows this and it's kind of a sad thing um wish that i had mentioned it in my video and i'm very sorry that i didn't um but if you do not go to your channel um, or your YouTube account and go to your subscriptions and click the button for those to be public, then they're private. Um, so anybody who entered this giveaway and has not made their subscription list public to all, um, if you entered the giveaway, I can't tell that you subscribe to my channel. And if that's basically the only one stipulation that I had for the contest, then you can't win. Sorry about that. We had some technical difficulties here with my camera shutting off randomly at the end of my video. Um, but basically the first person who um, did win the giveaway through the YouTube random comment picker, um, I went ahead and checked to see if she was a subscriber. She did answer the question, but unfortunately it was her. She was not in my subscription list at all. Um, and it looks like either she forgot to go ahead and hit that subscribe button or she very possibly has her subscription lists um, set to private. So unfortunately I did have to pick another um, 
winner and I went ahead and, and did check that the second winner was indeed a subscriber. Um, now, I'm super, super sorry that I didn't remind you all to make your subscription lists public. Um, I know exactly how um, bad that feels for the first several years of being an avid YouTube watcher and trying to participate in giveaways. I had no idea that my list was set to private and nobody could see. So very possibly I won several giveaways um, or not at all because I'm very unlucky. But regardless, had I won, I wouldn't have picked, been picked either because I had that set to private. So um, make sure everybody's set to, to public. <laughs> I don't want anybody to not win a giveaway because they've got their subscription list set to private, okay? Um, but anyway, without further ado, the winner is... Kathy Pillar or Kathy Pillar, okay? And there is her comment. I'm not sure that that is going to show up super well from my phone onto the screen, um, but if it doesn't, I will go ahead and put a picture up here so that you guys can see her comment. Um, but she says, congratulations on the 500 subs. Love the blanket in the background. If I win, I'd probably make something for my sister out of the magic light as she loves orange, and I think I'd make a little lap blanket out of the Rosetta yarn. Um, there were 48 total unique names who had won, so she had a 1 in 48 chance, um, and I'm super, super happy. So Kathy, if you could go ahead and shoot me an email, it is comfycozycrochet15 at gmail.com. Again, comfycozycrochet15 at gmail.com, which is also listed in the description box below, and it's on my about um tab for my channel as well. Go ahead and shoot me an email. Let me know that you're the winner and I will give you instructions. Just to make sure to verify who you are, um, I will have you go ahead and put, um, go back in. I'll give you like a code word or something in the email. I'll have you go in and edit your comment. Once you edit that comment with the code word I give you specifically with the email, I'll know you're you. Um, I'll just need your mailing address and I will get your prices shipped off to you, okay? Um, but stay tuned. Let's show you what you want. So in the video, I already showed you a few skeins of yarn. This is the orange yarn that she was talking about. This is the Magic Light in or orange and brown shades there. Kind of looks like a creamsicle with some chocolate drizzled through. Yum. Um, and I have used so much of this yarn um, and it's just like the ice pack that never ended. And so I have made a hat and a shawl and I still have yarn left over. So I decided I was going to gift it to you guys. So there's that. There is also eight skeins, six skeins, excuse me, six skeins out of an eight pack that I had of this beautiful uh, Rosetta yarn also by Ice. And it's got these beautiful beige, purple, um, and grays in there. It's kind of a marled effect, if you can see that, or tweeted. Really, really pretty. Um, 50 gram ball. So this was, sorry about that, you guys. All of these are made in Turkey. This is Magic Light, 100% acrylic, 100 grams, 360 meters. It's a number three lightweight, and they call for a four to four and a half millimeter crochet need oh, excuse me crochet knitting needles um and i've heard left and right that you can that can be the same for crochet hook or that you'd go up a size not sure really which is true because i don't knit yet but i will be so there's that one this one is the rosetta it's also a number three light i would say that this goes um this is about a two and not a three this is a very lightweight yarn uh, it is roving style, so in some spots it does go up to a three, but I'd say overall it's a two. Um, it calls for a four millimeter knitting needles, 50 gram balls, 200 meters, 30% um, wool, 70% acrylic. Very, very soft and squishy. Beautiful, beautiful colors. I'll hold up one more just so you can see a little bit of the color variation in there with the beiges It just wants to focus on my face with the beiges and creams and beautiful vivid purples and grays. So six balls of that, so 300 grams. Yeah, 
300 grams. Um, and then I went ahead and put a Premier Coffee Shop in the colorway Grand Canyon. It's not wanting to focus super well. There we go. Um, so this is beautiful, beautiful, luscious yarn. It's a lightweight number three. Machine wash, warm, lay flat to dry. Uh, calls for a G hook or 4.25 millimeter or a four millimeter knitting needles. It is 284 yards, 260 meters, 3.5 ounces, 100 grams, 85% acrylic and 15% wool. Um, so this is lovely, lovely. I think it would make a lovely scarf or something of that nature, a cowl, even a hat. Um, so you've got the six skeins of the Rosetta purple. You've got one skein of this, one cake, I guess, one skein of the Magic Light in the orange and brown shades. Now I told you that that was the pack that never ended, right? I think I had only four in there, but it might have been six. Um, but I used it and used it and used it. And I thought I only had the, like one and a half skeins left. Turned out I had two and a half skeins left while I'm organizing my um, yarn loft upstairs. I was going through it and rearranging and moving everything into my cubes. And I found another one. There you go. And this one is a lot less, uh, less beat up even. I told you it was still in the, um, plastic the other one was this one wasn't still in the plastic and yet it managed to stay way nicer so there is another skein popping it right in the bag y'all so there's that one and then i ended up with a crazy double subscription to crochet magazine and my spring edition finally went ahead and came in so i am going to go ahead and throw this in there for kathy if she wants it kathy in your email please do let me know whether you'd like this or not. If you already have this, please go ahead and tell me no, um, that you don't want it. And I will go ahead and save this for the next giveaway, okay? Um, but if you want it, it's yours. So please, in your email, um, give me your address. Let me know whether you want the crochet magazine or not. This has some lovely, lovely patterns in it. Let's see if I can show you what's in this one. A cute little top right there. So cute. Um, I thought this little truck was just so dang cute. You've got the vest down there, a little be happy bag. Um, super cute scarf right there. Isn't that cute? Hopefully you can see that. It's trying to only focus on me, but anyway, we've got a whole bunch of super, super cute patterns in here. Lovely shawl right there. And of course, very, very cute top right there on the front. So anyway, um, please let me know if you would like this. It does say 23 um, inspired designs to freshen up your wardrobe. So um, I think actually a lot of garments in this one. Um, let me know if you'd like this, um, this magazine. If not, I will gladly save it for the next giveaway and the next person can have it if you already have a subscription. But if you don't have a subscription, I would love to send this to you if you'd like it. And also, you know, if you say, yeah, I looked at that magazine, there's nothing I want in there please feel free to tell me that. That's A-OK. -okay. I will not have hurt feelings if you don't want it, okay? So that's all we have here for you today. Um, I, as I think we're over 600 subscribers now, um, in a little while I might be doing another giveaway. Um, never can tell. It won't be announced. Um, I really like the fact that this these giveaways most likely go to loyal subscribers who watch often who weren't expecting to run into a giveaway at the end of the video. They stayed long enough to find it and they end up getting a reward for that. So um, 
if you stay till the end thank you so much um kathy congratulations please do um in the comments congratulate the winner that would be great don't say your name though um because i think she should watch the video and realize that she got it um as the rules stated in the previous um giveaway video you do have seven days to contact me so you've got a few days but don't wait too long um uh if I do not get um, a response from Kathy within seven days. I will be um, redrawing for another winner. But I did check. She is a subscriber. Um, so thank you so much, Kathy. Um, I just wanted to do a quick giveaway. It's a small one. But just to say thank you so very much for um, being loyal subscribers and watching my content and chatting with me in the comments. That's always my favorite part of having a YouTube channel is just um, chatting with all of you crafty people, like-minded people, the positivity and the love is just so immense in this community and you guys are the reason. So thank you so very much. I love you guys so much. Hope you're having a great day, evening, weekend, weekday, whenever you're watching this and have a great one guys. Bye now.